Science has always been meaningful to me. I was, uh, in college, I majored in the history and philosophy of science. And so, not only did I do a lot of science, mainly physics, but I studied all of physics from Aristotle forward. And then later on, years later, after I was a lawyer, I, I worked in the uh, Office of Technology Assessment of the U.S. Congress, which w used to be the Science Advisory Office. So I was constantly thinking about the meaning of science in other contexts, not just philosophy, but now I was thinking about it in, in politics and how it was being used and abused. I've always been trying to understand how science fits into the rest of culture. But I think that the, the story of the cosmology of the universe, the picture of our whole universe, is not just how science fits into our culture, it's how our culture is going to be changed by science, and um, very profoundly. I and mean, that was around the time that I read the book by Thomas Berry, The Dream of the Earth. He did something with language that I had never seen done before. He took this understanding of the danger that our planet was in, and he turned it into this astonishing poetry from which you could feel that there was such a power in the earth that I was actually part of the earth, that it wasn't just, oh, we have to stop this kind of behavior because this kind of problem is, it wasn't just all about what are human beings doing that's destructive. It's that it's, it changed my concept of what human beings are, that we actually, we, we actually arise from the earth, that we are the earth, that we, that if we could just sense this, we might be able to have some more respect, I guess, mere, just reverence for what we've been given. I never had that feeling of reverence, really, I think, until I read that book. And it, because it wasn't reverence for God, it was reverence for the earth. And I was able to do that, that I was able to do. That was the first time, that book was the first time that I realized that you could have some kind of a, an inner spiritual understanding of science. I had started thinking about this idea that some people have a higher power and it really helps them. And it had seemed so ridiculous to me that I really never considered it again in my whole life. After that, you know, that girl in high school that I decided was really stupid. Anyway, um, I really did want to have a higher power, but I also knew that there was no way I was going to believe in any god of any religion. I still thought all the religions were ridiculous, and the fact of the matter is, to believe in them, literally, I still do think it's ridiculous. But, um, and yet I knew that I wasn't everything. And I knew that if I was going to have any kind of a sense of power, higher power in the universe, the kind of thing that makes me feel more powerful than I would be, or more, more in tune, more at peace, if I was going to get anything like that, it was going to have to be absolutely real. My own connection to the larger universe, what was it? It's, you know, it's very hard to say exactly how this developed, but it, di it took many years. I did not have a revelation. Uh, no, no voice is ever going to speak to me out of the sky because I don't believe there are any voices up there. But what's happened is that I've gradually come to understand that I am central to the universe in the way that our book, The View from the Center of the Universe, um, explains. And what I wanted to do was to take this science and transform it into something that is beautiful and artistic and also profoundly meaningful, that really you can get something out of that can change your own feeling about who you are, because that's what I needed to do. I wrote this book for myself. The process of writing this book was my process of putting it all together. I, if I got anything out of my Jewish education, it is that the universe is one. And that is just such a deep assumption, and yet I'm always surprised when people don't buy it. I, I'm always surprised when people say, well, there's the spiritual world and there's the physical world, and basically never the twain shall meet, and that's fine with me. I, I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's why I hated you know, religion when I was a kid. It just seems so stupid. I mean, here's the world. What's this other world? The fact of the matter is that by writing this book, I really have had as what I consider to be an absolute spiritual transformation. The voice is gone. I don't criticize myself at all. I am just blessed, and I know it. 
And even though I don't believe there's anybody blessing me, that's not the point. The point of being blessed is just to feel this immense gratitude and this wonderful sense that I am, I am truly central in many, many ways to this amazing cosmos. And as you always like to say, of course we're made of stardust, but stardust is only the very, very, very lowest, simplest level. I am made of all these different levels of organization that also had to be created slowly, slowly, and preserved in um, the data in it, had to be preserved in, da in DNA and, and the evolution of our species. When I think about myself as being made of history, just as surely as I'm made of matter, it's just miraculous. We can explain how you can be spiritually connected to this real, honest-to-goodness universe and, and, and find a place in the cosmos which has not been available to human beings for 400 years. And not only that, the place is central. We are not existentially tossed randomly into the universe, um, specks of dust in some vast universe. We're actually smack in the middle of all the possible sizes in the universe. We're at the center of the visible, of the, uh, visible universe. In many ways we're central. Our entire universe is in a special place in the larger realm of eternal inflation, if indeed that theory is right, but it is the best theory that's available. So there are many ways we can see ourselves as central or special if we choose to. And the point is that when we look at histories of the past, we realize that every earlier culture chose to see themselves as central to the universe and to see themselves as special because that's what made them who they are. That's what gave them the self-confidence to build their civilization. And without that, as we have been for the last few centuries, we lose our self-confidence. We don't even have the self-confidence to preserve the civilization we've already got. We're killing it. Why? Why is that? Why are we so different? It, it could very well be that we don't have a sense of how we fit into the universe and how we fit right in this very special place. That's definitely part of it. And, you know, we don't tell anybody they have to see things the way we do. All we tell them is it's now possible to have a meaningful universe that's not only consistent with science, but that arises from it, that arises from the fundamental concepts of physics and cosmology, and that's what's really thrilling. And that when you take this position, when you sort of take your claim at the center of the universe, not the geographic center, when you take your claim at the central of, center of the meaning of the modern universe, you, see, you feel yourself becoming so much more. You feel yourself becoming part of something huge, and that is the foundation of meaning. All meaning comes from the context in which you see the thing that you're trying to understand the meaning of. Nothing has meaning in itself. You always have to have a larger context. Now, what we find is that by having a cosmic context that gives us as individuals meaning, we now can see how to, what our planet means in the cosmos. We can see how to solve many of the problems of our planet, or at least what directions to go in on a global scale. We had no context of meaning that was larger than the globe before this. And now we do. And this is a huge opportunity for the human race. And that's why we're so excited about it.